everyone. Following the resignation of Tim Payne as captain of the Australian's test team, I felt it necessary to share Cricket Australia's position on this matter. I would like to start by acknowledging Tim. Despite the mistake he made, Tim has been an exceptional leader in Australian cricket over the past three years. <laughs> Neither of us, Nick Hockley or myself, can speak directly to, this, to the decision-making process in 2018. This includes being able to provide any further insights around how the original judgment was made, that Tim's behaviour did not breach the code of conduct and that it did not warrant any further disciplinary action. Once again, while I cannot speak about the original decision making in 2018, what I can say is faced with the same circumstances and with the benefit of all the relevant information about this matter, Cricket Australia would not make the same decisions today. I acknowledge that the decision clearly sent the wrong message to the sport, to the community and to Tim, that this kind of behaviour is acceptable and without serious consequences. The role of the Australian cricket captain must be held to the highest standards. Since 2018, the organisation has implemented more education for players, including training in relation to acceptable behaviour and engaging in social media, including the exchange of sexually explicit texts. But what is clear is that there are lessons to be learned and we as an organisation have more to do and will do more in this area. Thank you. I will now open up to questions for Nick and myself. Uh, just before we go to questions, guys, just another reminder, please take your mics off. It's affecting everyone else's opportunity here. Um, so if you do have your mic on, um, I can see a couple there. Um, please turn your mics off because it will affect the uh, the press conference. Thank you. Uh, we'll get away. We'll start with questions. Uh, Laura Spurway. Afternoon, Nick. Um, just a question. You've just mentioned there that the behaviour that you've um, now come to find out about would not be viewed as acceptable today by Cricket Australia. Have you had conversations with Tim Payne that that is your, um, that is your view and did that lead to him deciding to resign from the captaincy? When this issue um, came apparent again last week, there were a number of uh, discussions that were had with Tim and Tim came to the view that it was best for him, for his family and for Australian cricket to resign and we support that decision. Thanks, Laura. We'll go to Andrew McGlashan. Um, hi, Richard. So can I just confirm based on that statement at the start that um, um, the, the, this current Cricket Australia structure and, and leadership would not have endorsed Tim as captain in 2018 with the information you now have? I can't talk about the 2018 decision. I wasn't there. I'm not sure of all the circumstances that took place. What I am saying is that faced with the facts as they are today, the Board of Cricket Australia today would not have made that decision. Thank you. Melinda Farrell. Uh, thank you. Um, when was the, the current administration aware of this case then understanding that you're saying weren't around at the time but when did the board and the executive become aware of uh this whole case look i think people probably became aware at different stages um this became an issue again last week and the current board was brought up to speed on that issue last week uh, personally when i joined the board two years ago I had a very brief conversation where I was informed there had been an incident with Tim a few years earlier that had been subject to the full integrity review and no finding of misconduct and that would be the matter as far as I knew at the time. Can I also ask that, that question of Nick, please? Yes, uh, sure. So um, similarly, I was made aware that there was uh, an historic investigation um, and that that uh, matter had been closed. Um, I uh, received, um, in light of uh, the fact that um, this matter was uh, going to become, um, uh, we had received a media inquiry, I, I received the investigation report on Wednesday evening last week, um, and at that stage, I praised myself of, of the full details. 
We'll go to nine Perth. Sorry, have you got me there? Yeah. Thank you. Um, you say that in, in light of the findings, um, it, it is inappropriate for Tim to continue in his current position. But if this was something that um, the board and, and yourself were aware of um, earlier, that there had been a, an investigation into it, why is it only inappropriate now that it's been made to the public? As I said, a decision was made in 2018 and I wasn't aware of all the circumstances then. What I'm saying is that the board, in the circum if those same situations arose now, would make a different decision. But at the time, a decision that uh, an investigation was held, um, the decision was made and the um, issue was closed. Anuj Mishra. Uh, do you think Tim Payne's resignation will hamper uh, Australia's ashes preparation? And have you narrowed, narrowed down who will be the captain of the test team now? Sorry, I didn't hear the first part of that question. You sorry, it was breaking up. Could you repeat that? Uh, Richard, so do you think, I, I uh, can jump in, Anoush. Okay. Payne's resignation will hamper ashes preparation. I'm sorry, I'm struggling to hear. It must be my connection. What was Richard, uh, the question was, do you think this will hamper the Ashes preparation? And secondly, um, who will be the new captain? So in relation to the second question, um, we had put in place a process for finding the next Australian captain that was going to take place over the summer uh, in anticipation that Tim would one day retire. We're obviously accelerating that, accelerating that process. Um, it will be a very thorough but brief process that will look at all the relevant criteria for a captain of the Australian cricket team um, and we'll come to a conclusion of that uh, obviously in plenty of time before the Ashes. Look, the team is a very strong team. They're working hard together at the moment, most of them up in, in Queensland. Um, it's going to be a great Ashes series and I think the team are very excited to get on with it. Sam Landsberger. Uh, will Tim Payne play at the Gabba? I know you're not selectors, but will you, uh, do you expect him to play in the first test match? You're, you're very right there, Sam. I'm not a selector. Um, <laughs> Tim is available for selection and, and look, it's up to the selectors. I, I couldn't comment on that at all. Jalissa Apps. Hi, you've said that there would be a different um, outcome or a different decision made if it was happened today. Um, compared to 2018, but you've had a lot of time in that time where you've obviously known about it. Is it a case that you were just hoping this was would never come out and, and would anything have been done if it didn't come out? Look, I think, as I said, a decision was made in 2018. It hasn't been looked at it since then um, until it was about to become public now. I, I think it wasn't something that was addressed regularly through that period. It was just something that wasn't, it was something that had been put to bed and uh, hasn't been looked at until it became public last week. But if it was appropriate for Tim to be captain all through that time when the nothing has changed since then, why not? Why didn't you back him now? What has changed now? Is it purely just because it is public? Look, as I said, the decision was made in two thousand eighteen, um, based on what, based on the board at that time and what they knew. Um, no one looked at the decision between now and then until until now. And we've it's become a public issue again now. We've looked at it again now. Thank you. Scott Bailey. Yeah, given Tim took on the role as captain at a time where really turning around the image of the Australian cricket team was or Australian men's cricket team was key, how much do you fear that that's been undone in some ways in the last 24 hours by what's emerged since? Tim... Tim admits he made a mistake in 2017. Uh, I think his behaviour since then has been uh, incredible and he's done a great job as a leader and as an ambassador for Australian cricket. I think the culture of the team is very strong. I think what is happening in Australian cricket, both at a test level, at a professional level and a community level, uh, there's so much good work going on across Australian cricket um, and I think that'll continue. Bill Farrell. Uh, thanks. Uh, bearing in mind that um, 
Cricket Australia has said it, it doesn't it ha does not condone any of this but also that Tim Payne was cleared of any breach of the code of conduct. Uh, is Do you think that the code of conduct is actually fit for purpose? And do you think Cricket Australia has in place um, sufficient uh, procedures and policies to deal with uh, integrity issues and issues of things like sexual harassment? I think the code of conduct is appropriate, but we will always continue to review all our policies and procedures. And I think that's important to note that um, a lot of things have changed since that time. Uh, I talked about um, some of the player education that's gone on. There's a, there's a full uh, player education program addressing a whole range of things, including texting. that has been in place since the 2018-2019 season. Every player is now required to undergo annual integrity education um, and we've undertaken a full review of our anti-harassment and discrimination policy. So we're continuing to review all our policies uh, and we will continue to review that as, as any liberal organisation would. Lockie McCurdy. Thanks, Cole. Um, just yesterday, we saw Cricket Tasmania um, release a statement sort of referencing the allegations against that current employee. And they seem to be two very different incidents and when you consider the serious allegations uh, what, what did you make of that statement trying to reference something else that didn't really have much to do with this specific incident i think i'm here to talk about the specific incident involving tim and his actions and that's all it's appropriate for me to talk about sam lansberg uh, just to clarify so if tim wanted to to continue as captain now uh would he be captain for the ashes that's a hypothetical question, Sam. You know, Tim has made a decision that's in the best interest of him, his family, and Australian cricket to resign, and we support that decision. Andrew Wu. Yeah, hi, Richard. Um, my question is um, regarding uh, the um, the decision of Tim Payne. I mean, should Cricket Australia, should the board members have made themselves aware of? Um, the situation around Tim um, a lot earlier um, and acted a lot earlier rather than wait for this to become public? Andrew, I think you, you don't go onto a board and ask to see every integrity decision that's been closed over the previous X number of years. This was a decision made in 2018 after an integrity investigation. It was a closed decision. Um, no, I think it was answered that. Back to uh, Nine Perth. Thanks, Cole. Uh, would, do you think it's been a mistake to let Tim continue as captain and not share the findings of an internal investigation with the public in an era of elite honesty? Uh, I'm not sure I completely understand your question. Uh, Tim, Tim's not continuing as captain. Um, he's, he's available to continue as a player. We feel his resignation was appropriate. Um, but I don't think it's appropriate to share any more than that. Sorry, I mean, continue as captain over the past three years since the internal investigation without that information being shared with fans and members. Look, again, I, in 2018, an investigation was undertaken, um, a decision was made. Um, the contents of that, the contents of Tim's actions were at that stage private. So I don't think it would, would have been appropriate to share it. Uh, thanks, Cole. Uh, my question is to both of you. Uh, you know, in the wake of what happened, the investigation you spoke about, and the fact that a lot of people, including you guys, were aware of something having happened, uh, the constant reiteration of, like, you know, his uh, squeaky clean image and, uh, you know, what he's done for Australian cricket, do you think now, in the wake of what happened last uh, or yesterday, it, it just led to even more outrage. Maybe Cricket Australia could have at some point underplayed that. As I said, look, a decision was made in 2018. Um, it, that was a decision that was final and, and the details weren't known to anyone who's been on the board since that stage. Um, I think it was a one-off incident of private matter. I think. Tim's conducted himself uh, in a very exemplary manner since then, and 
Uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, sorry, can I get Nick on that as well? Sorry. Yeah, I think I'd re reinforce Richard's comments, but only to say that you know, I think the team over um, recent years has really prioritised uh, team culture. I think we've made great, great strides. Uh, as, as Richard, um, as Richard has, has said, um, certainly we're very clear on uh, the, uh, the vision for, for cricket to be the most uh, inclusive sport um, with a culture of respect at, at its core. And uh, you know, some of the policy work that Richard has referred to, uh, so the, the, the education work, a fantastic player education work in conjunction with the, with the ACA, including around uh, you know, appropriate use of, of um, social media uh, and, and the like. Um, you know, the, 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 the reality is as you know, leading sports people, um, we're uh, role models for, um, for, for young aspiring uh, cricketers. And, um, you know, I think as Tim has, has said, um, you know, he's, um, he has, he has, he has owned that, 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 that particular mistake and, um, has uh, has resigned from the captaincy. So, um, yeah, we we and we we certainly we certainly respect that. So, um, you know, going forward, uh, I think it's you know it's, it's incumbent on 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 everybody to have the you know the, the highest level, highest standards uh, to re represent uh, represent Australia um, and particularly you know in in on leadership position. Michael Atkinson. Yeah, given how this has all played out and the fact that you said that the current board, if they were presented with the facts at the time, wouldn't have reached the same um, conclusion or result, um, do you think that this should be a catalyst to look into uh, any other integrity issues that are closed and see if they need to be addressed differently? Look, I think... Uh as I said, every every issue is different. Um, every circumstance is different. I think it probably uh, we may need to just look back. I, I'm very confident in the way integrity decisions are made in the integrity unit. Um, we will have a review back over the past few years, um, but I'm sure that that will lead to no further changes. Oh, Bailey. Yeah, I understand you've, you've both sort of said that when you came into you know, the roles, of, at least on the board or as CEO, that you were made aware of the incident um, but didn't delve too deeply into it until the last week or two. If the benefit of hindsight, do, do you wish that you had looked into it properly and deep, deeper when you had taken up your current roles and therefore could have acted on it earlier than what's played out in the last 24 hours? Look, as I said, I was given a, a very high-level briefing where there been an incident, uh, a thorough investigation, and no misconduct found, I think that's, uh, there would be no reason to investigate that further at that stage. Andrew, Nick, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry, Scotty, one question each, mate. Andrew, no, I was just, okay. No, I, I, I'm of, this, I'm of this, the, same, the, the same position we've got. Um, yeah, really uh, uh, strong, robust integrity processes and there was ne never. There's no cause to to question um, anything that has has gone before. My my focus since coming into the role has been uh, to do everything we possibly can to uh, to to keep cricket going through an extremely uh, difficult period and to ensure that we're uh, we're developing a really strong culture uh, going forward and that um, we're we're doing everything we possibly can across the network to to, to strengthen the game um, at every level. Andrew McLashan, we've probably got about uh, six or seven minutes uh, before we might need to finish up, guys. Andrew. Um, are you just able to confirm um, what knowledge of this there was among other parts of the high performance setup in terms of like Ben Oliver or, or Justin himself in terms of in the timelines that their knowledge of this might have come about? Uh, I actually do not know uh, the answer to that question. Sorry, Nick, do you, are you aware of no, I'm, I'm not aware of um, 
uh, what uh, Justin or, or Ben uh, were privy to it or, or knew it at what, uh, what stage. Um, so I don't have anything further on that, Andrew. Okay, thanks, guys. Andrew Wu. Yeah, Richard, um, I appreciate that the decision that the board reached um, in 2018 was before your time on the board, but there is a crossover uh, from the board members in 2018 to now, and several of them are, are still on the board. I mean, have you sought an explanation from um, the, the board members who were there in 2018 and who are still present as to why they made the decision that they did? Um, and, and what have they told you? Look, Andrew, as I said, I don't think um, I can go back and look at a decision that was made in 2018 at the time. Because it, uh, I don't have enough knowledge and I, I can't go back and look at that decision. What I can say is that the whole of this current Australian Cricket Board, including those members that were on the board in 2018, uh, are very clear that if the same circumstances arose today, we'd make a different decision. Surely they could share that. Um, share that view with you. I mean, um, you quite easily have a. I'm sure we have many casual conversations with other board members to find out why they uh, why they reached the decision decision that they did because there, there doesn't seem to be much um, explanation as to why that decision was reached. Look, there's lots of there's lots of context and things from 2018 that I'm not in a position to talk about. Sam Landsberger. Just to clarify, what decision would this board have reached? I mean. Beyond the captaincy, would uh, would you still have Tim Payne playing for Australia if this had occurred under under your watch? The captain of the Australian cricket team has to be held to a very high standard, which is why I think it is absolutely appropriate that Tim has resigned the captaincy, uh, which is in the best interest of him and Australian cricket. Um, the board of Australian cricket is comfortable that he's available as a player. Tom Decent. Richard, clearly there's been a lot of chat about Pat Cummins becoming the next, next test captain. Um, where, where does that leave Steve Smith? Is the board open to a return for him or is the door still shut for him? Uh, as I mentioned, Tom, there's going to be a, a very thorough and now quite quick process, but it's still a very thorough process. And we'll look at a range of criteria and um, there are a range of candidates who are available for that role. Steve Smith is one of the candidates that is available for that role. John Perrick. I was just going to ask a similar type question, but I, I guess I'll direct it to Nick. Um, has Cricket Australia sort of finished, um, I guess, not, not so much investigating Steve Smith, but just assessing various um, parties, um, sponsors, fans and the like in terms of what kind of reception there would be if Steve was to come back as captain? Um, certainly what we've been looking at uh, through the process is, uh, as, as well as obviously captaining capability uh, on, on the field is uh, the kind of um, the values, uh, the culture uh, that um, uh, and those value, those attributes that we, those legal attributes that we want to see uh, in the next captain um, of the Australian men's test side. And so, um, as Richard said, that process will be um, expedited now, but, um, you know, th those, um, you know, those values of uh, uh, respect of, inclu of inclusion, um, of, of making uh, the sport and making Australians proud uh, are absolutely going to be at the forefront of the, um, the, the, the criteria that we apply through that, what will now be a, a very much an accelerated process. Lockie McCurdy. You've mentioned that you're comfortable with Tim Payne as a player moving forward, but I guess in a lot of other workplaces, if a person was found to have sent unsolicited messages, employment would likely be terminated as an extreme example. Why do you feel comfortable that if Tim Payne was to line up at the Gabba in December? Look, I think it's, it's, uh, it was a, the, the communications in 2017 were obviously private. Um, and I think any investigation takes into account all the circumstances of the time, uh, but we are comfortable that Tim is available to be selected as a player. Probably only got time for uh, maybe one or two more here, guys. Michael Atkinson. Uh, it's, it seems that, um, I know that you said there's a process. Um, it seems though Pat Cummins is 
um, the front runner to replace. Are you confident and have you looked into there not being any indiscretions or historical investigations that could um, rear their ugly head the way this has? So I'm not going to make any comments about who is the favourite or who is the likely um, because we will go through a thorough process and I think you can be sure that part of that process will not be trying to make sure that the best that we are able to that uh, those issues don't exist. We'll go to Katie Brown and we'll finish with Mel Farrell. Thank you. Uh, Richard and Nick, I think it's pretty hard for us to gauge and for fans why it is that he can still play but not captain. Um, you have to appreciate that that's, that's pretty hypocritical. I think I've said before, I think the role of the Australian captain is, has to be held to an incredibly, incredibly high standard. Um, and uh, the team has made the decision that based on his behaviour, it is not appropriate for him to be Australian captain and we support that decision. Um, but that's where it stands. Last one here, guys. Mel Farrell. Thanks, Cole. Um, Nick and Richard, obviously you've said several times that you weren't there at the time, but something this serious, is there an issue at Cricket Australia with the handover process or the information that's been given? Uh, and uh, it's not only just previous board members, as, as Andrew Wu said, but obviously there must have been other staff members at Cricket Australia who are still there. There must have been a raft of people who've known about this. Uh, so why hasn't the issue been handed over properly uh, when you consider that it involves the Australian captain? I think, as I said earlier, when it was a case of a issue at the time, a full investigation by the integrity unit, finding no breach of the code of conduct. Uh, and the board make its decision on the basis of that report. Um, once you have a private matter that has been subject to a full integrity unit investigation and recommendation, it wouldn't be normal for that to be part of a handover or a, anything like that. 